I'm getting ready for all those Christmas parties and I want to make a statement necklace and today I'm going to make memory wire to make that statement necklace. Hi welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name's Carol and on this channel I show you how easy jewellery making can be. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk you step by step through the process of making this necklace and talk about everything you'll need. Before we get started, I want to apologize to you for the state of my nails. <laughs> I have been painting and they I have blue paint under my nails and I cannot get it out, so I'm sorry about that. I didn't have time to paint them. If you would like to see what I've been painting, I will leave a link in the description box below to my lifestyle blog and you can see exactly what I've been up to. So let's get started and make this necklace. What you're going to need to make this necklace, 43 of these 6mm crystal glass faceted beads. These ones are the colour crystal, clear, and they have an AB finish. You will need some memory wire, this one is a 5.5mm, and if you've not used memory wire before, it's really cool. Um, it basically is in this round shape and you can stretch it out and it will go back into shape. Obviously you can't stretch it too much but um, it will stretch to go on your wrist and things. People often make bracelets with it and I've made plenty of bracelets with memory wire. And if you're measuring memory wire you actually measure across the diameter. You will only also need 11 head pins and these ones are five centimeters long but you probably don't need them to be quite that long if you have shorter ones that's fine. You'll need some chain. This is a piece of mother and son chain, meaning that it goes a large link and a small link. And I've got about 20 centimeters of that. I have a hematite magnetic clasp and magnetic clasps, clasps are good because they go together really, really easily. I can't even pull it apart, <laughs> just like that. I have six six millimeter jump rings. I've got two four millimeter jump rings. I have 48 of these cool square round beads. Now these ones are square beads but they have rounded corners and they're quite cool. I've got 11 of these 3mm round balls, silver balls, and I have 22 4mm beaded rondelles. In terms of tools what you will need is two pairs of um, chain nose pliers, you'll need a pair of round nose pliers, and you'll need something to cut your memory wire with. Now I'm using an old pair of cutters. You can get specialized memory wire cutters. The reason you don't use your good cutters on memory wire is because it will blunt them. This is an old pair. They're still quite sharp, but they're really ugly looking because they've got some rust on them. So I'm using these to cut my memory wire. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my memory wire. Now what I'm going to do here is take it and I'm going to find one round. So if you have a look at where the memory wire begins and ends, it's there. Now I don't want a full round, I actually want about three quarters, so I'm going to go back to about here and I'm going to cut it. It doesn't matter, you don't need to measure it because you will, the beads will take up the space. And I'm going to take my pliers and my round nose pliers and I'm going to make a loop in the end. If you've never made loops before, I'll leave a link in the description box below and a card up the top for a video about all about loops. Okay, so I'm taking the wire between the jaws of my round nose pliers and I want a reasonable size loop. I don't want it to be tiny, so I'm not putting it right down at the end. I'm putting it a little way from the uh, end of the pliers. Now with this, obviously the more you go up, the larger the loop. So I'm putting it there and I'm going to make sure that it's not sticking up between, I, can, I can't feel it when I rub my finger over the top. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I get a nice close seal when I do my loop. Now I'm going to hold the wire coming out the bottom of the pliers between my thumb and my forefinger and I'm going to twist away from me, twist my hand away as far as it will go. I'm going to loosen my grip, bring the pliers back and I'm going to twist again. And I might need to do that sometimes several times to get my loop round and closed. Well that's what I have now. But I can see that my loop is actually a little bit crossed over so I'm just going to take my chain nose pliers 
and I'm going to just give it a bit of a squeeze and if it doesn't go down what I'm going to do is holding that wire steady I'm going to push down with my pliers just on the loop part so that's what I have. Another thing I'm noticing is actually that my loop is facing backwards a little bit so I'll just straighten it up a little bit. Now you can play with it after you've got your beads on as well and sometimes it's easier to get a grip on once your beads are on. So I'm just going to put that to the side for a minute and I'm going to make my dangles because they need to go on before with the beads. So I have my head pin here. By the way notice my head pin is a little bit bent. Sometimes they come like that, that's fine, you can just straighten them. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on one of my little balls, my little six millimeter balls, three millimeter balls, one of my beaded rondelles, and one of my beautiful crystal beads, another beaded rondelle. Now I'm going to make a loop in the top of the head pin. Now one thing I didn't tell you is you will also need a pair of flush cutters because you do need to cut this. You could cut it with your, with your old pliers if you wanted to. Now what I'm doing here is I've taken the head pin between the jaws of the pliers and I'm going to make a bend in the top as close as I can to oops, the top of that beaded rondelle. Now I'm going to take my cutters and I'm going to cut about a centimetre from that bend. So like that. Now when you cut using your um, flush cutters, hold both pieces of the wire, the, the tail as well as the piece you're cutting, um, because you don't want it to fly away. You don't want it to, to have an accident with it. All right, so now I'm going to make a loop here as well. So to make this loop, what I'm doing is putting my thumb right up into that corner there where I just the, the corner I just made and holding the back of it with my forefinger and I'm making sure that my wire isn't sticking up just like before I'm going to kind of push down and twist away I'm actually kind of pushing down onto my thumb to get a nice round loop that will be centered on my wire so the goal is to have your loop centered on the wire coming out of the bead Mine's not quite closed, I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a twist there. There we go. And sometimes you just need to give it a bit of a squeeze that way too because sometimes the, as the wires go round you twist your hand and they it comes up on top. Okay, so there's my first dangle and I'm going to make 10 more of those. Alright, now I have my 11 dangles and I can go ahead and start threading on some beads onto my piece of memory wire. So remember I've got my loop in one end and I'm going to start off with one of my square round beads. Then I'm going to put on a glass bead, a crystal bead and another square round. Another crystal. Now I'm going to put on another of my square rounds and one of my dangles. So that's basically the pattern. Now what I'll do is I will leave a layout diagram in the accompanying blog post of the beads so if you would like to look at that. So I'm going to carry on and repeat that so I'm starting again with a, another square round and then a crystal. Now if you're enjoying watching me make this necklace it would be great if you would subscribe and then you will see more of what I make. And of course like the video and ring the bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So there we go that's my next run of beads and I'm going to put on another dangle. And then just repeat that a couple more times. So that's what I have now. Now I'm, what I'm going to do is make my loop in the opposite end. So I need to cut my memory wire to about a centimetre, maybe a little bit more because my loop was quite large, 
um, from the end of the beads. So once again holding both ends so that I don't have a accident. Just making sure I've got it in the right place and cutting. Right. Now it's a little tricky to get the beads to stay on and while you make your loop but it's not that hard. <laughs> Just hold them between your thumb and your forefinger. Now I'm going to make my loop exactly the way I did before. Now what I've done here, this is actually a really good example. So I've made my loop but I haven't closed it yet. And it's good that I did this because it's good to show you. Um, so you can see my beads are going up inside the, lo the loop but my loop is too far down so what I need to do is pull it back up a, a bit because I cannot get, if you can see there, I cannot get it closed because the beads in the way. So what I'm going to do is just pull it back with my pliers take my pliers right on the end and kind of pull it up as I turn it around and I'm actually going to go down to the tip of my pliers to do that because I've already established the shape but sometimes just to get that tip and the point of the wire in you need to just jiggle it around a little bit and use the pliers closer to the end. So there's my closed loop and I am going to give it a squeeze with my pliers because it's sitting up a little bit. Okay, there we go, there's my finished component and my dangles and now I'm going to make four, uh, three more of those. I realised I told you I needed three more, I actually only need three in total. Now what I'm going to do is show you how I'm going to join them together. So what I'm going to do is take my two pairs of chain nose pliers and a jump ring and I'm going to open my jump ring. Now if you haven't used jump rings before I will leave a link in the description box below and of course a card up the top to a video all about jump rings. So just opening my jump ring and I'm going to feed on my two components here and then close up my jump ring. there's one and now I'm doing do the other exactly the same way just make sure before you close it up that they are going to hang the right way don't want it going backwards or upside down that's probably more more what you you will get okay so there's the main part of my necklace and what I'm going to do is make two more little components for here that are not as long as these ones and that way it will kind of cup around your neck. So taking my memory wire again, just move that one out of the way and this time I'm going to cut a little bit less, there's my end. I'm going to cut it about half. It really doesn't matter, I mean you just want to be thrifty with your wire that's all. And I'm going to make a loop in the end just like before. Just straighten it up a bit. When I've finished a project I always go through and check all my loops are closed properly and that one isn't and I also just make sure everything's nice and straight. This time I'm going to start, and well it's basically the same design, it's just less of it. So one of my square rounds, one of my beautiful crystal beads, another square round. So that's what I have and I'm going to cut the wire and make a loop in that end just like before. As I said I was a bit generous with my wire but sometimes it's good to be a bit generous because 
um, with memory wire because then you can hold, you have something, it gives you something to hold on to uh, while you're threading the beads, a little bit of the extra wire. So just like before, making sure it's not sticking up and giving a twist, readjusting and another twist just to get that loop until your loop is closed. Now what happened here, I'm, I'm not sure if you noticed, but the wire, the beads shot off the other end. And the reason they did that is this bead went up inside that loop. So I'm going to just loosen that a little bit and take the bead out and redo the, the loop. If it went in, it should come out, right? <laughs> just wasn't quite closed, quite enough for me to, for it to stay closed. It's good that you see that I do things like this because, you know, then you'll know how to fix it. And I'm just pushing that loop down because it's sticking up a bit and I think that was the problem why it wasn't, why the, it allowed the bead to go in. Alright, so there we go. There's my component and I'm going to make another one of those. Now I have my two components and my necklace, so what I'm going to do is add these two to this one. Now I have my all my components joined together and all I have to do is add the chain at the back and the clasp. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my two remaining jump rings and I'm going to open them and add the chain to the end. So just opening my jump ring, adding on my component here. Oops. and my chain, the end of my chain. Now one thing to note with this chain, so at the moment I'm ending on a sun or a small link, I'm going to get rid of that small link and just add it to the big one. We'll just make life a little bit easier. So I'm just going to cut that off. It also makes it neater if both ends are done on the same size loop link. Okay, just adding that on and closing it up with my pliers. And double checking. Always double checking your links, your loops are closed. Same thing on the other side. And this one does finish with a large uh, loop, so link, so I can just add it on. You might be thinking, wait a minute, I haven't put my clasp on, but I will do that in just a minute. So there's my necklace. Now I want to put my clasp on, so I'm going to take this piece of chain and I'm just going to measure it to find the centre. So putting my jump rings together and I'm going to cut the centre just with my flush cutters. And it just happens, to, so happens that it's one of those small links, so that's actually quite good. At this point what you want to do is measure to make sure it's going to be the right length for you, so just hold it up around your neck and make sure it's going to be the right length. And actually looking at it, I think it could be a little bit shorter, so I might cut a little bit off the end of that chain, because I don't think I allowed for my clasp when I worked out the chain requirement. So I'm actually going to cut a few links off. Of course it also depends on what you're wearing it with because I mean for something like this you probably want to wear with a really nice open um, neckline. So I have cut off one, two, three, four, five large links and that's what I'm going to do on the other end as well. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to cut at that small one there. And best um, practice the link still went flying. <laughs> All right, just double checking now that I have them the same length. And they are. Now I'm going to take my tiny wee 
four millimeter jump rings and add my clasp. Now I could have used a six millimeter here, that's fine, but I prefer the look of a small jump ring when I attach a clasp. It's just a personal thing, personal preference. However, if I'm putting a clasp that hooks into a jump ring, I will use a bigger one. Right, just opening my jump ring, adding my chain on. Now when you put a magnetic clasp on, the chain will stick to it, so you've got to kind of hold it out of the way while you do it. And it'll also stick to your pliers. <laughs> okay, so there's one side done. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. The clasp is getting in the way because it's sticking to the pliers. Okay, and there you go, one finished necklace. I really hope you enjoyed making this necklace with me and that you have a party to wear it to. <laughs> If you have, it would be great to, if you would subscribe, like the video and ring the bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload new content. If you're interested in the jewellery I'm wearing today, I am wearing a blue and green bracelet that I made in a tutorial a wee while ago, so I'll leave a link in the description box for that below. Um, my earrings I made a long time ago and I don't have a tutorial for those, but let me know if you'd like me to make to, to do a tutorial for something like this. In the meantime, it would be great if you would check out our Facebook page and our Instagram as well. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.